What up, what up, what up? Hi, how is everyone today? It is almost time for Design and Muse, the color experience, which is on tomorrow. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Everybody's on here today. Y'all are coming through. Hey, cuz. Uh -uh. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. <laughs> You look beautiful. You got Thank your hair you. The last time. <laughs> oh yes. This is the first time I've done my makeup in. Some really, months. it looks amazing. Your eyebrows you. are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I just got some Fenty makeup for the first time last uh -oh, week. Uh oh. Uh oh. So I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I love Fenty. Oh wait. Can you hear me? Let me make sure my Wi-Fi isn't. Oh, I can hear you. Tripping. Is everything good? Everything's good. Okay, perfect. I'm excited to get started. <laughs> let, yeah, me, let me so see a little bit more of your it. background. What's that behind oh, you? Oh, okay. So okay. these are all my all the products on Comfy Art. Like I um I collaborate with artists. And they put the original artwork that is exclusively on Comfy Art. And you won't see it any, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and you can buy it. So this is the Power Mug from Zuri, one of my artists that you'll be able to see tomorrow on the event. And then Very cute. we have this collage book bag by Gigi. Love it. Yeah. So we have a lot of really like we got fanny packs and all of that Thank stuff. You. So like if you buy something today, today's the last day. If you buy something under the Design and Muse collection mm -hmm. today, you get a free entry to the event for tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna have to give me something. Get something, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Girls popping over there. Girls popping, girl. <laughs> I've been doing my whole day, honey. I was a teacher this morning. I was a first grade teacher with my daughter. <laughs> She's doing Spanish and stuff. I'm doing, I'm doing Bantu knots in my hair. <laughs> you did a great job. I know the struggle. The Look struggle. at you doing all of the jobs. Teacher, right. designer, <laughs> hosts. Right, hosts. <laughs> So what's going on? Like, uh, tell everybody about what you do, who you are. Like, I am like so happy that I found you on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is popping, y'all. If y'all not on LinkedIn, popping. LinkedIn is popping. I found her. Somebody liked your stuff. It was your when you was posting your flyers for verses, and mm -hmm. someone that I knew. I guess somebody liked your stuff, and that's how I found you. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, <laughs> this is like the inside scoop of Versus, right? Right, because outside of that, you, you never really know who's actually working on it. Right. The other team members, they're not on LinkedIn. They're not posting their work. Yeah. So look at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great. I think everybody should be up there and utilizing it. That's Absolutely. where you should really be posting your work. And mm -hmm. if you're looking to get your feet wet, working with other brands and freelancing, LinkedIn is really the way to go outside of Instagram. Because this is for Instagram. your friends and family yeah. and things of that nature. LinkedIn is where you go and get the work. Yes. Yes. See, see I think me, I look on LinkedIn to see where you work, your your history. And then I try to find you on Instagram to see mm -hmm. what your per personality is, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And then I DM you. 
<laughs> so you're probably like, oh, she looks nice. She looks like she'll she'll do it. So let me go ahead and DM her and get yeah. <laughs> very glad you did. So yeah. with my current job at Hillman Grad Productions, my hands are a little bit all over the place. Working for an Emmy Award winning talent, Lean Away. I know. It's amazing. It's great. But it's also a lot of hard work. There's a lot of building out the company, being that it is a startup, and just being flexible enough to help out with any and everything. So I'm working on graphics, working on our marketing initiatives for all our TV and film projects. Whether wow. that's Quibi, you ain't got these. We have an upcoming film on Netflix called The 40-Year-Old Version. Very excited for that. Wow. Able to that's, work on that was a, is that a me remake? That's going to be a remake? Oh, it's not a remake, but well, it is a play. Well, the 40-Year-Old Version right, it's is... a play on the title. Okay, a play on the so title. Okay. It's the 40-year-old version of a rapper. Okay. <laughs> not sure if you've seen the actual trailer for it. No, not yet. But really, it's a really, really dope film that's coming out October, like the first week of October on a Friday. Oh, so they should be promoting it. I need to, every Friday, mm -hmm. I just go on Netflix just to see what they have. Because they don't really promote all the stuff. Like, you have to search for it. Most of the time, right. we'll just see some, see somebody posting about it. So I'm sure we'll see more about that movie. And yeah. Especially when it comes out, because mm -hmm. Netflix doesn't really do a whole bunch of advertising beforehand. Mm -hmm. They like to wait until it's on the platform. Right. Say, hey, go see this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. That's a lot of work, um, just being a part of that. Because it's like culture right there, yeah. you know? Um, exactly. And just having, um, especially with Netflix, just having that sector of African-American films that they really try to promote and push along with their other content is, um, is really good, too. Exactly. Especially with Strong Black Lead. I right. Love Strong, Strong Black Lead. I'm so Black happy Lead. that they, uh, they started doing that. Me, too. Yeah, and, and it just launched what a year probably and a like half a ago? year and a half ago. Yeah, and look at how it's just bloomed into this magnificent. Because it tells thing. people that we're here, like we're, you know, here to talk about and want to know and see more of what um who we are and stuff. So they're doing a great exactly. job. Do you remember? Do you remember that video that Strong Black Lead launched? That initial one with Ava. Spike Lee, all yeah. of the filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was dope. That Even was that, dope. I think it was like a minute long. It made me very emotional. Very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, like your background as far as like school and and your career path and where you want to where you want to go. So I'm from North Carolina. I graduated from UNC Charlotte. I received my BA in English. So I actually didn't even receive my degree in production or marketing, mm -hmm. any of that. I have always loved writing, but <laughs> oh, <hi. laughs> I also love graphics. I just love visual storytelling and during my college experience, I had my classes. I always mm -hmm. had an unpaid internship and then I always Me had too. a job to cover those bills. Yep. So with that, I realized, Tisha, you can't really have a hard major. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that. And, and right. if you do, you probably won't graduate. And if you do, it won't be on time. So go right. with something that you can be a little bit more flexible in. So with English and then my, my internships in production and marketing graphic design, I realized that I really do have a passion for working in television and film. I love storytelling. I love how things are brought together. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had received an acceptance letter for a residency program a month after I graduated college working with Amazon Studios, where I fully realized this is the lane that I'm supposed to be in. And... Right. I am 
currently looking to be a little bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing now with working with verses on top of my job that I would like to see what more freelancing is like and working on projects on the side with other brands. I also love music as well. So whether that's cover art or working on like tour merch, things of that nature, I'm just really excited just to see where I land and what happens. Because I, yeah. I don't like to place myself in a box of what I think is possible. And you shouldn't. <laughs> I hate when, um, that was one of the things when working in corporate America and the recruiters always ask, so what is your favorite thing to do? I mean, what is your focus? And I'll be like, that's a hard question for me mm -hmm. as a creative, because we put our hands in a lot of different things um, when we're creating and making right. things. So when someone asks me, because I also do digital marketing. So when somebody asks me, well, do you like paid search or do you like, SEO and I'll be like doesn't all of that come together <laughs> it does <laughs> isn't that when you're supposed to know the 360 of marketing like I don't understand like the question when people ask that so yeah let I had that experience as well with a recruiter telling me that I needed to stick to one thing yeah. And not be interested in three to four. And no, that because they're going to be... want you to know that stuff when you get in there. You're exactly. not supposed to really tell them that you know it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to like, it's a gift. <laughs> when you, exactly. once you're and in I the found, thing. Mm -hmm. I found that corporate jobs, they really want you to stay in one lane. And stick yeah. to that only. And if you call yourself trying to go out of that lane I'll, and say, hey, I kind of mm -hmm. want to dibble and dabble in this, they don't like that. They, then they feel like you can't do your job and they need to hire someone else who can do just that. Right. It's almost as if it scares right. them. And I think right. it was really interesting that I was actually unemployed in L.A. for a couple of months, but I had so many interviews, so many interviews with agencies and then I ended up getting this job with Lena. And after that happened, I thought, so why wasn't I good enough for these various agencies, the ones where I proved to them time and time again, I can do so many things. Yeah. But yet Lena's company pretty much welcomed me with open hands, open arms. Open arms and yeah. is allowing me to really grow as a creative and an artist in ways that other companies were not willing to. Yeah. Yeah, I've 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 had that before. Um um and I don't know your age, so you you'll you'll probably see it more when you um go into other positions or um mm -hmm. right. if you stay with where you are now because that's a great opportunity. I wouldn't see you leaving anytime soon, you know, cuz you can oh, grow yeah, no. relationships there. Um, that will benefit um, you with, you know, the other dreams and goals that you want, right? Um, exactly. But um, as far as, like, just, you know, I, I just, I don't, yeah, I, I just, I don't get it. Like, you should want people that has multiple interests so you can groom them. And then I think it's more, it's not more of the, the, company I think it's more of the person that's hiring and then the person it's more personal right. you know what I mean they say it's exactly. not personal it's business but it's really how do you fit in the culture and that's mm -hmm. just something that we need to kind of we need to have that changed um and uh because it doesn't work that it doesn't work exactly. very well because once you get the person that you think is supposed to be there Usually they're gone in a year or two on to the next. Mm -hmm. And you want to mm -hmm. at least kind of keep them at least three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three years, you know? Yeah. And you're right about having those personal connections. I would say <laughs> part of my job is keeping healthy relationships with other people. And then half of my job is having a, a deliverable, some sort of asset to give to people. But this industry is all about relationships and how you can converse with others, how you can right. relate to people from 
various backgrounds. I I I want to say that my boss <laughs> Marquis Pfeiffer, he hired me off of us having more in common. Yes, he liked my portfolio and my yeah. website, but he also had graduated with his degree in English. He had a lot of friends from North Carolina. That's good. And my first day having a conversation with him, we just talked and related mm -hmm. on so many different things. So I, I also feel like that's just a big part of finding your tribe and finding the people who are meant to be in your life also outside of being professional because we can always help each other get to where we want to go. So we have a question. Look at that. <laughs> what, what are, are some names? of the books behind you? So this is my grandma's collection of books. Okay. I'm currently at my grandparents' house. She has books all over the place. And oh. every single book she has read every single one really every single book every single wow. book so she's got bernie mac up what? There. <laughs> maybe you never cry again some latoya jackson she's got it all back here Listen, he has another on uh, what's your favorite and have you read one <laughs> Don't put her I'm not going to lie. I haven't <laughs> read these because these are, such, these are all older books. But I would have to say my favorite book has to be If Bill Street Could Talk. I also like a lot of self-help books. So The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and things yeah. of that nature. How to Be a Boss Bitch. <laughs> books have swears at the end that's the one that you oh, need yeah. to get her for christmas <laughs> i my other favorite author is sister soja oh my Midnight. god the winters uh the coldest winter ever the coldest winter ever that's my book of my lifetime like i can relate to so many things especially just growing into a woman and stuff like that stuff was like real. Uh huh. <laughs> that was real so life. So real. <laughs> Listen, somebody needs to get those rights. Right. Maybe I need to it was pitch that to, to Home and Ground. You maybe you need it to was. pitch it. Like <laughs> it needs to come up on Netflix. Like, come on. Why has no one turned any of those books into a movie? I they were. They, they was about to. I think it was. Uh, um. I may be wrong. Um, what's her name? Golly. Um, no, not you, Madison. It's like she know what the book is. Sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, she's so cute. Um, Will Smith's um, wife. Um, Jada? Jada. I think Jada, like, way back in the early 20s or something, she was going to do it or somebody was going to try to do it, but it never like came into it. Like it never did it. They need to. Cause that's, that's a real, that's such a good book. It's and then it, it gives you a eulogy. So you can do part one, part two, part three, part four. It can be yes. like twilight. <laughs> right. <laughs> twilight. <laughs> Right, Sister Soldier Twilight Edition, right? Twilight. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> please stop making all that noise upstairs, please. Maddie. I got some noise in the background, too. Oh, my gosh, y'all. <laughs> the life of That's a part of working from home. Working from home. This is my life. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious to know more about your design background and how oh, you started really? business <laughs> and even you starting this platform. Yeah, so uh, right, New Phase Multitasking. New Phase is like the hip hop um, connoisseur. He like has all the memorabilia, um, you know, like everything from CDs okay. to like posters to tickets to like he is 
the person. He has stuff at the TI Museum here in Atlanta. Oh. Like he is everything. And he'll be on the um on the event tomorrow, designing muse, the color experience. So we'll get to know face. So check him out. He's on the N U F A C E. Okay. And um but anyway <laughs> but um yeah, so my background, I'm from Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and uh, mm -hmm. I moved to Atlanta when I was like 11, so I'm from Atlanta. And uh, I went to the Art Institute and uh, for graphic design, and then after after I did that, I went to um, Full Sail University for my internet marketing for my master's. So, um, so, and then I went to Emory <laughs> as a, for a certificate for um, my Six Sigma green belt. So for like okay. processes and stuff like that for, in corporate America. So got all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So my main like love is art and graphic design. So I started Comfy Art when I was when in 2016. It was just a pillow company. And I designed pillows. I was burnt out of uh, doing freelance work at the time. So I wanted to still do art, but try to make money real money off of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still working on that? I, I did that. <laughs> um, and then in 2018, I rebranded Comfy Art to focus more on community-based and more helping on artists in my community. Um, mm -hmm. So just reaching out to artists here in Atlanta um, and having them create original artwork for the pro platform so I wouldn't always have to create new stuff all the time um, and then helping them with the digital marketing and branding of their personal brand and all also their artist brand um, and and helping them to um, see the difference in those two brands mm -hmm. and then also sh letting them know about like the analytics the you know um, that um their, in, their personal analytics, my analytics, Comfy Art analytics, and their personal analytics because they have different audiences than I do. So bringing those audiences in to learn about Comfy Art then, and also learning about the platform and how we help artists here and stuff. So it's like a yearly contract mm -hmm. that they have with Comfy Art. I have exclusive rights with all the new art for a whole year and it's on like a, mm -hmm. a membership um, aspect of it. And then we do events around the art. So nice. that's, what it is. Yeah. that's very exciting. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, that's really amazing. I, like <laughs> I, I just enjoyed your energy whenever we first talked. I enjoyed speaking with you even about your journey, you know, freelancing, you. having your own platform. And like I told you previously, I, I do not see another platform that is specifically targeting visual artists and trying to highlight them. And I think what we do is so special. I mean, it is very special. We create from our imagination, but we also have to be technical with mm -hmm. Photoshop, with InDesign. And yeah. it's just a craft that I feel like is really underestimated because it yeah. takes a certain amount of mental energy, brain power. And whenever I make a graphic, I always say that I first see it in my head before I actually see it come alive on Photoshop. Right. right. There was even one time where I had made a GIF of Yara Shahidi from Grownish. And as I was working on it, it was just a still image and I was so stressed mm -hmm. out about what I was going to do. How am I going to turn this into something special? And so I took right. a nap, but in my nap, <laughs> I had a dream and right. in that dream, I was still working hard on that graphic. Right. And in the dream, I saw her eyes moving back and forth. So that's mm. where the idea came for that project what? to have a gif where she's like looking side to side, sipping her cup. Mm -hmm. 
So even outside of mental energy, you also, I feel like it's right. sort of even a spiritual practice. Like you got to be in tune. You got to be in tune. It is very spiritual and emotional um, because I'm just now getting back into my own, um, you know, art um, per se. And I've just bought like a little notebook where I'm drawing and doodling and stuff because sometime next year or whenever it happens, I want to do my own gallery show. And um, so just trying to get okay. back into that, it's, um, it's been a process. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot. So it how is. have you been? Like, how have you been with COVID? <laughs> COVID has been really, really tough. I'm the type of person where I feel like I get my inspiration from being out and about and mm -hmm. connecting with other people, mm -hmm. going to the beach, going out, having a blast. I feel like that's when my creativity is just enlivened. So mm -hmm. I've had to find other avenues to be creative during this whole pandemic because number one, you're not supposed to go anywhere. Right. And now I feel like I'm getting back in tune with my childhood ways where when I, mm -hmm. whenever I was a child, I would just go outside, take a walk, get yeah. on the bike and then go inside and then maybe paint or write a story or anything of that nature. Right. So going back to my child ways and also just figuring out during this time, it's made me really sit and think about what I want to do mm -hmm. and what I want out of this life. And even with just this week alone, where I get this eye diagnosis, mm -hmm. it's just made me think about what type of gifts I want to give to the world and right. how I want to move forward with my art and how I just want to be a little bit more intentional with the projects that I take on and the things I see myself doing. So I'm really excited to just take a step back in the next couple of weeks and just yeah. think about Tisha and Tisha only. What does, what does Tisha's plan look like? And I can't say that right now I have that plan. I mean, during this pandemic, if you had a plan before, now you don't. <laughs> No. <laughs> and and how can you really have a plan during this pandemic? How can you really? Right. You can't. We don't even know what's going to happen for the presidency. <laughs> Listen. That's a whole nother story. And let's not get us down. We're in good spirits. <laughs> <laughs> so when people say, where do you want to be in three to six months? Where is the world going to be in three to six months? Right. Because if I don't know where the world is going to be, how am I going to know where... I want to be right right but, but you shouldn't one, still you shouldn't keep it on hold you should just keep on moving um have faith yeah you know walk in faith and everything <laughs> should be gucci <laughs> exactly that that's all we can do is walk in faith pray about it speak yep. to your family i right. mean one thing that i feel like is really come into the forefront of everything is yeah I love to work yes I work very hard but there are also things in my life that are important like my grandparents like my mom like my dad and my siblings and people who I really do need to keep more mm -hmm. in touch with on a daily basis I've lost two family members during COVID I have and I still one. had yeah. to work still had to work through mm -hmm. all of that I mean I was in Los Angeles when my grandfather passed away and mm. that day was tough I mean my family is calling me telling me how the funeral went but yet I still got stuff due mm -hmm. so that's yeah. COVID for you it's a bunch of loss it's a bunch of not knowing what's next but still having to push through mm -hmm. and yeah. keep moving forward regardless of what's happening yeah, And I can say, even though this has been a rough time, I've also making more strides than I ever have before. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of two sides of the same coin. Yeah, things have been rough, but I also never thought that I've had, I'd have the opportunity to work 
on graphics for a platform like Versus that is just so big and huge. And when I turn on the news the next day, it's up there. And mm-hmm. then I see all the different people reposting my work. And sometimes it wouldn't hit me how big it was and how yeah. big of an accomplishment it was because of COVID, because mm-hmm. I haven't really been able to celebrate those wins and feel comfortable celebrating because the world is in shambles. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so glad that you were open to just sharing your work, you know, during this time, um, especially with that, with the platform versus, and um, it that gives everybody joy. Music gives people joy. It brings you back to where you, uh, you know, it's like a time warp, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. And just and to see point, stuff. Mm-hmm. At one point, I wasn't even comfortable sharing my work. I would just get so scared when someone would say, you really need to post your work on Instagram. I didn't feel comfortable with it. I don't know why, but it's something about being an artist and being so sensitive. Yes, I, I'm an artist. Yes. I'm sensitive <laughs> about my shit. And my graphics <laughs> are one of them. Right. And it's even taking that step to share your work and regardless of whether or not it gets celebrated or not, just put it out there. Just let it be what it is. Yeah. But still overcome that fear. I don't know what it is about being an artist, but that's one of the things that I have struggled with is sharing. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's me being still being young and not... I mean, I'm comfortable in myself and having confidence, but I feel like I could have more confidence. And I think more confidence also comes with age. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Because I'm I'm around everyone in their 30s on up who have Uh already went through things that I've gone through. They are they are set in their ways. They are fine with what they do. Yes, we are. They they say whatever they want to say. (laughs) I'm not all the way there yet because I did just graduate from college last year. So it's it's certain things that come with the territory. Oh, I remember when I graduated (laughs) from college. (laughs) The memories. (laughs) And I didn't think that I'd be this far along after graduating college, because I wasn't that student with the 4.0 that was on Dean's list. I was right. one where my friends had all those high grades and they'd be like, Ooh, girl, <laughs> you, you got to get it together. <laughs> and it's, it's just interesting <laughs> to see how things have still fallen in the place, even though I was really a hot mess in college. And that's all. But I you are a creator. <laughs> like, a hot I, mess. My grades was not good I was probably a B C in high school student um probably a 2.8 3.0 type of girl in college I was probably like a 3.2 and I made Dean's list probably like once (laughs) but other than that yeah I did horrible on the SATs. I did horrible on the ACTs. Horrible. Horrible. Mm-hmm. But I, mean, I, I did too. I mean, what, you know, here we are. We're good. Yeah, we just because need to know honestly, how to add and subtract. That's <laughs> all. And add and sub- <laughs> know how to add and subtract your money. And right. know them percentages and what them percentages lead to. Right, right. And all you need is a calculator for that. And get the people <laughs> and and put the people in place in the places that you need them. That's that's what we do. Exactly. <laughs> people who know what they're doing. Right. And just like we have our lanes, other people have their lanes. So right. I don't I don't want to be that one stop shop for every single thing. I rather collaborate with other right. people as well. And right. tap into their talents the same way people would like to tap into mine. I believe in teamwork. Mine. Teamwork makes the dream work. It does make the dream work. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, 
even though COVID, we don't know what's going on with COVID, like, other than, you know, staying in at Hillman and, and doing your work and stuff, <laughs> what, what else would you want to do um, as far as, like, your five-year goal? Like, you just got out of school, so, like, you so, what, 20, 22? How <laughs> <are> you? <laughs> Like, I don't even say, I don't, yep, I don't I'm even 22. need to say five years. I don't even need to say five years. When you hit 30, <laughs> where you would want to be? <laughs> 30 by 30, because I am still early in the game, I would. And a freelancer full time and just having so many different gigs in the next couple of years, I would like to design a movie poster. That's one of my goals. You could probably just do that seeing... by next year, girl. That's, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> that ain't nothing. That's just the I... ass. That's just the ass. And, may, and maybe I do need to go ahead and ask. I yeah. want to go to a movie theater, and you know how they have the graphics up on the different boards. I want to say that I designed that for. Yeah, a movie. I would be. I would see. This is what I always do. I would not ask. I would just create it. <laughs> since you be in those meetings, girl, you'd be like, "Oh, okay, that's coming up in the next five months. Let me just create something, and then." put it out there and let them and know. And I, I should. And and that's another thing with confidence. I feel mm -hmm. like I need to be more confident even stepping up and asking for things because that yeah. is one thing that I struggle with. I'm a part of those meetings and I'm making those pitch decks that get shows and films greenlit and yes. I'm pretty much coming up with the visual style and look of those yeah. concepts. Yes. And while I create those, I think of how the key art should look, the art direction of certain assets and shows. Oh, what's my favorite color? <laughs> what is lavender? Lavender is my favorite color. Really? Lavender, lavender? has always been my favorite color ever since I was a young child. I love purple, and so the lighter version of purple. That's my mm -hmm. color right there. Also, love some yellow as well. My favorite color is green. Okay. I love green. Oh, wait. We already saw that question. Oh, okay. We saw that one. Let me see what that you give. Okay. If you could give advice to the older generation. If you could give. Creative generation who are you trying to tap your industry knowledge. Okay, I can read it. If you could give advice to the older creative generation who are trying to tap into the industry from the knowledge you've gained since working in it, what would it be? I would say to definitely form friendships with people, form relationships, go to networking events. How I got this job was actually an event series that is, was formed by Ray Benjamin. She actually had the job before me and they were looking for someone. And I met her at the event that she was holding. And mm. she also happened to have Kendra there, Kendra Jordan, Kendra Joe, who was also working in the mentorship program of Hillman grad. And it wasn't until I went to that networking event that I was actually able to put a face to a name and say, Hey, I'm Tisha. I saw that you guys have this position open. Can I take five minutes of your nice. time just to tell you a little bit more about me and my experience. And then a few days later ended up getting that meeting. So even outside of, meeting people and having those relationships just have something to prove something mm -hmm. to show them whether that's a website a lookbook even if it's just samples on your instagram whenever mm -hmm. you are ready to have that conversation with someone have something to back it up because people love proof in this industry if i yeah. say 
that I'm a graphic designer and I can do this, that, and the third. And if I go to a person and I have nothing to show for it, they're not going to believe me. Right. Because Hollywood is full of fluffers. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, was, if, I, if I wanted to go into screen, right. If I wanted to go into screenwriting and mm -hmm. met up with someone and say, Hey, I want to get my script done. I want to learn from you, how you write your scripts. They're going to be like, okay, well show me, show me a pilot. Right. And if I don't have a pilot, how are they going to know what I'm capable of yeah. and if I have the potential? Right. So it's just building upon what you already something. have, building upon your talent. <laughs> right. Right. But see, that's the thing. Even with script writing, all they're requesting of you is, I think, five pages. They just want to see like a little intro to see what you're oh. capable of. Yep, they, no. they don't even request the no. whole script anymore because that's really difficult. Yeah. And for others, it's just a, a deck, a deck outlining what, oh, yeah. what you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I can my see biggest yeah, the advice. Deck. Yep. Like I ask, I'm always asked about the deck. I always have it on deck anyway, no pun intended, but I always have it ready to go. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you don't gotta ask me nothing. Said I always so have ready. it on deck. <laughs> yeah, I always have it on deck. I remember having a conversation with uh, um, I just met her. She was um, an editor for Rolling Out magazine, and um, I had a meeting with her with a, a great friend of mine that introduced me to her. Um, and we had like a you know a little lunch deck or whatever, I mean, a lunch date or whatever, just to get to know each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was, we had the meeting, we were vibing, and I was like, I want to do this, this, and this. Um, I would love to have, like, an article or whatever about comfy art and stuff. And she was like, yeah, well, I would need, like, a deck and, you know, information about the event and all of that other stuff. I was like, oh, okay, that's what you need. I sent it to her while we was there on my phone. <laughs> And she was just like, so, I mean, it's on you now. Like, I already got my stuff. I'm ready. I just need you to write the article. And she wrote the article. Exactly. She was like, there was no nothing else that she could say to me because it was all mm -hmm. back on her plate. She didn't have to wait for nothing. And that's why you have to be with Stay ready now. so you don't have to get ready. That's right. what I was Because you're never going to be waiting on me at all when it comes to stuff like that especially when i really really want exactly. certain things to happen i'm gonna already have before i even mm -hmm. reach out to you i'm gonna already have all the assets that you need so when you ask those questions you'll already have it in your inbox mm -hmm. stay ready that's the way to go <laughs> stay ready right listen what what is that quote where it says something about opportunity is when preparation meets um, you know that quote I I can't get it right now but yes <laughs> something like either way you have to be prepared always and if, if you're looking always. for the right opportunity prepare for it in advance I think that's a part of manifestation is getting right. ready for what you say you want out of an opportunity out of life and I really think that Preparing COVID was even, even the if perfect it's not opportunity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for me, it COVID had <laughs> COVID had me prepare for a lot of stuff moving forward for um twenty twenty one. So like you, you're gonna take some time so like after this big event. Um, tomorrow, the color experience tomorrow at 12 to 8 p.m. It's a whole day. Get your tickets. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to take some time for myself to kind of re-focus um, on myself and then also prepare for the next year. And then, you know, we have the holidays coming up. So that's a whole mm -hmm. thing. Oh, and, luck is and what the happens holidays. when 
for preparation meets opportunity. Yes. Yep. That's yes. the quote Thank right you. there. That's the quote. <laughs> who, who, do you know him? You know the... the no, that's, um, a, that's Samir. Her. That's Samir. <laughs> yeah. I'm like to talk to yeah. you. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the quote to live by. That, and that's yeah. what I feel like I did all throughout my college career was just prepare, prepare, prepare. And the funny thing is... I had always told my family and friends that whenever I graduated college, I was going to go to Los Angeles. A lot of mm -hmm. them didn't believe me. They were like, girl, you, you just saying that, how are you going to get a job out there? And even my family was saying, you're in North Carolina. So why is somebody in Los Angeles going to hire you when they could just hire somebody in Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. I didn't let that get to me. I just it just went in one ear and out the other because I had a goal and I felt right. like I was manifesting what I needed to. And I had a vision that I was going to be in Los Angeles as soon mm -hmm. as I graduated. And that's what happened. But right. I consistently worked toward it. And I kept telling myself that I just have to build upon my skills and what I have and just prove myself. And that's exactly what happened when I got the, the opportunity with Amazon studios working with Amazon Prime Video Originals Marketing, mm -hmm. was able to work on projects like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and The Boys. And my first time in Los Angeles was for my interview. Wow. And I don't think that I would have even have gotten hired if I didn't say, hey, I actually have some samples of my work, mm -hmm. even though my job had nothing to do with graphics. And it really wasn't that well it was creative but I just didn't have the opportunity to make graphics but I feel like what made them want to believe in me and believe in the fact that I could do marketing and work on those types of campaigns was me showing my work and what I already yeah. had on my website yeah. so it's all about just proving yourself and then saying hey I got the grit I came out here for this please just give me a chance <laughs> right right absolutely and they're more open and willing to listen instead of hearing you. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about showing mm -hmm. it. Showing right. and proving what you got. Because there's what a lot got. of competition. And uh -huh. even though I, I even hate that I use the word competition, but there is a lot when it comes to the job market whenever you graduate from college. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going up against so many other students who are looking for the same roles and people as you. that have been out of school yeah so e even with that it's just a matter of showing why you deserve it and how you stand out and why you're right for the position and i strongly believe that what's for you is for you what's for another mm -hmm. artist is for another artist so never feel like you're missing out on anything never feel like you're missing out on an opportunity because if it has their name on it, it has their name mm -hmm. on it. What yeah. has your name on it has your name on it. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I don't know what else. Anybody else have any questions? We are going down into like almost 15 minutes and Instagram likes to like shut people off really quickly. Right. Um, <laughs> shut you off right at the hour mark. Right. Instagram they does not don't play. Be playing. <laughs> <laughs> want to shout out to Instagram for not messing up today because yesterday they messed up on my live oh Thank yeah you. Instagram did well so what happened yesterday so I was doing my one of my digital series called comfy talk it's like a mini um uh TED talk and I have people to come Cute. on and you know talk about their skill and and we learn from them so it's between 30 minutes to an hour depending on how long they want to be on there um if if anybody okay. wants to be a part of that um it has to be focused on some type of art form which i see that life is art so it could be anything um so if you want to be part of that mm -hmm. series um it's on my igtv and you can look through what um, the other people. I do need some men. I don't have any men on there. So that would be great if I can get some men to jump on the <laughs> comfy talk. But um, yeah, okay. so she was on there. She was on there. It was uh, one of our sponsors, um, Graphic 
Artists Guild, and they were presenting presenting on copyright. And um, it was so interesting because the it was something that we all needed to learn. And she was going into detail about copyright infringement and all of that stuff. And then um, I had a phone call, and then I jumped back on, and she was gone. So I called her, and she was like, yeah, I'm still on IG Live. And I was like, no. And she was like, no, I'm still on live. She saved it and everything. And it didn't even show on the IG TV at all. So we had to redo the whole thing. So irritating. Listen. So irritating. Technology. Technology. Yeah. And but, yeah. It, ha it happens. And it's been happening to me a lot. So just this week mm -hmm. alone, I feel like all of my technology has just been crashing. Yes, like, it's been crashing. Everything. Computer, it's just not acting right. Are we in retrograde mm -hmm. or something? I don't even know I if I'm saying the so. word right. Retro retrograde. <laughs> retrograde. I don't know. But whatever that term is, I feel like that's what's making That's what's happening. It has to be. Look at my life On is top going of See, you see how that happened? You see? Oh, wait, see? Look at my skin was looking all crazy, great, and amazing. <laughs> Let me see. I, I like how you design your products. That's one thing that I'd like to learn more about on the side. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like designing like some like rugs and shirts. Like everything. Black Girl Magic. Pillow. We got this one right here, which I think is by Blinky Warbucks. I think that's awesome. amazing. So cute. So I'm I'm the type of designer that just overthinks everything from top to finish. So when it comes to products, like how particular do you like to be? And are you one of those designers where you're like me and you overthink and how do you overcome that? Because I don't I would overthink like to about it. I'm very op free when it comes to art. So, so I need to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a that's but but that's good that you're like very detailed when it comes to your art. Like I that's probably like not my strong point sometimes. Um so I that's something that I've always had to work on um for me. But but that's good. That's good. You can see the detail of in your work, and that's good. That's good. Thank to see. you. So don't worry about that. But it we can talk about and that more, more um, offline. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. I'm I'm excited because I, I would really like to learn more about your creative process mm -hmm. and how I can use some of your gems to help me along my journey. Absolutely. Being an artist is hard. People it think is it's hard. just all fine and dandy. You could just be free. Yeah. But whenever you have an asset due and you have a lot of pressure on you and so many different things coming at you from all kind of ways, even then it's hard to be creative. Like mm -hmm. being creative is a lot of pressure. It is. And even having to take care of your mind, make sure that you're gonna you're in a good headspace to even design is right. super duper important. Because when is. I'm not in a good headspace, I can't, I can't design. I can't, me either. Me either. It's but it don't with. stop them deadlines. It don't stop them no, deadlines. No, and you can see it though, <laughs> which is so bad. You can see, you can see it. And I know like your creative director or whoever is looking over your work, be looking at you like, what you been doing? Like, you'd be like, like what's I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> let me step out for a minute and get my mojo back. <laughs> right. Let me go take a walk. Right. See what happens. Right. There have been times That's why where they I have, have drinks God. in the agencies. That's why they be having beer and wine at the agencies. Because we be needing that. <laughs> See, I thought it was just because they wanted us to let loose. I didn't know it was because of that. <laughs> well, it should but be. But now it makes more sense. It makes more sense. <laughs> now, that's one thing like, that I, I need miss to drink. about working for agencies. Yeah, I miss them happy mm -hmm. hours. I'm not going to lie to you. I miss them happy right, hours. Right, happy hours. <laughs> Every Friday. Right. Every Friday, right? 
I used to work when I used to work at um, Aspire TV. We used to have Wednesdays for the Wednesday wine that wine uh, wine down. Like they would okay. bring in like wine so we can taste them and stuff like that. So that was always fun. We were so like tipsy, and then probably had like three or four hours left of work. But we get the job done. We'd be zoned <laughs> in our work. <laughs> That's you, see, awful, you huh? need that. <laughs> you need that. I need a cup of wine every now and then. Right. I need that. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the brain moving because when it's <laughs> when it's flat, it's flat. <laughs> right. It is flat. Oh. So then it's now. Is it get? Do you see the timer? I see the timer. It's on my end. I had gotten a little notification. How much time do we have left? We have eight minutes. Okay. <laughs> Any, oh, anybody this was else? so anybody amazing. Else? I know. I loved it. Uh, this is this is really my hair is just like not doing right today. Maybe tomorrow. Like, be this better. this is really the platform we need, and we need these types of conversations happening. I mean, outside yeah. of talking to my family and my friends, yes, that's great. But also talking to other creatives like yourself, it just, it feels like I can have someone to relate to. Yeah, to that's how I feel too. Like I, the people that I pick for these conversations is more of, I want to get to know you. Like I want to form these relationships and collaborations mm -hmm. with people. And um, I think collaboration helps everybody, um, especially to get out and to, you know, get the word out about what you're doing um, on the back end of certain brands and stuff. So right. we can't do it by ourselves, boo. <laughs> we can't. And people mm -hmm. have to understand that there is, it's not the people at the forefront. It's the people in the right. back end who are really right. making stuff sh shake in right. the business. Right. And those are the people who you should be trying to connect with. And not, it's like Issa Rae said, it's not always about, you know, networking up, mm -hmm. networking across. Right. That's right. the way to go. With That's the everything. way to go. Because they are connected to the people that they are, that, ha that have those relationships and that can vouch for you. And it's all, it's all about the vouch. <laughs> it's all about someone being able to vouch for you and saying, yep. hey, this person is talented. Let's bring them in on this. It, you can't skip steps and go to the higher up person because the person yeah, be like, who is you? Who are you? And why are you talking to why, me? Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Girl, stop. You better go downstairs and talk to that security guard. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you you gotta start small you gotta start somewhere you can't right. you cannot skip steps in this business and if you skip steps then you can end up having to come back a few yeah if you skip yep. them but if you just take it step by step prepare mm -hmm. for what you want it'll be a steady journey it might be a little cricket but you'll be going yep. straight up Right, right. Hey, we we know what we're talking that, about that's here. The, that's this business. Uh huh. That's the business. We we love oh, it. <laughs> right, I know. Right. Thank you. They sleep. We grind. I know that's right. I love your name. Yes, that's how thank I feel you, every girl. Day. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's how I feel all the time. <laughs> Well, it's let me know if you'd like to do something like this again. Yeah, absolutely. I'll um, I'm always we, down. Call me, call me once we get off of, off of here. If you have time. Okay, perfect. All right. Yeah, let's connect. Let's connect. All right, y'all. <laughs> thank you. All right, um, it's, thanks, it's guys. To go for straight on. In. Um, we're gonna um put it straight on IGTV and then um, also check out the product that we have on Comfy Art. Um, the, 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 you will get a free ticket to 
um, the color experience for tomorrow. If you just want to go to the color experience, you can buy the ticket. It's only $15. It's all day to eight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what we have going on. It's going to be food demonstrations, mixologists, DJ. It's going to be amazing. So I hope to see y'all there. Bye. Amazing. Can't wait. Bye. All right. Bye-bye, hon.